This feels like it's a message surrounding a relationship. You really need to be trusting your intuition. This King of Pentacles is feeling kind of sinister here right now. I mean, look, 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 look. There's just a sinister look that I get from this guy's face. I feel like something has been revealed, something, what I want to say is something has been found out. But with the Seven of Swords in reverse here, I feel like you understand what's happening. You're seeing past the illusion, even if you can't really prove it on the surface, that's why the High Priestess is coming through here because intuitively, I feel like you know what's up. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general daily energy reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is a general reading, okay? And so that means it could, it's for a bunch of people, it could resonate at any time, so it's not necessarily going to resonate with everyone, yeah? I do recommend that you try and watch as much of the video as you can, because often people will find that even though it may not make sense in the beginning, by the time we reach the end of the reading, that's when things start to make sense, and then people realize that actually the message does resonate for them, yeah? So do the best you can there. As always, please like, share, comment, subscribe, um, share your story down in the comment section. I really love hearing from you guys. And I love having discussions with you guys. Yeah, throughout the day, you know, share your comments, say whatever, and then I'll respond if I feel like I, I can, okay? Um, yeah, so um, most likely going to be a timestamp in the bottom, in the in the description box, not in the description box, in the comments section, the pinned comment, very first one. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there really isn't much that I want to say other than I spent yesterday uh, recording a pick a card reading for the new moon, the full moon, excuse me, in Sagittarius that's coming up next Thursday. I'm super excited to get that out to you guys. I have to edit some stuff and get it out there. So it's going to be out by this weekend, yeah, so look out for that one. Okay. I guess there's no real need for a, uh, a, <clears throat> a timestamp because we're getting into it now. So let's just get into this reading here for the guys, for you guys and see what we've got for the collective today. Yeah, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, places, and, and just energies in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. Alrighty, guys. Five shuffles. Uh, today, I'm using the Mystical Manga deck. Yeah, this is one. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right. What's going on with the collective? What messages do we have for the collective today? What messages do we have for the collective? Alrighty, let's see. Overall energy, you do have the Ten of Swords. Okay, that's not bad. Ooh. All right, uh, this feels like it's a message surrounding a relationship. Uh, the first card out was the High Priestess. And what I'm getting with this, you guys, is that you really need to be trusting your intuition here. Um, 
<clears throat> with that, you have the Seven of Swords. You have the Seven of Swords is in reverse here. You have the Devil. You also have the King of Pentacles. And I'm not gonna lie, this King of Pentacles is feeling kind of sinister here right now. I mean, look, 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 look at is it if it'll focus? Look at, I don't think it's gonna focus. No, no, you're not gonna focus. I don't know. There's just a sinister look that I get from this guy's face. Okay, and with the Seven of Swords in reverse here, I feel like something has been revealed, something, what I wanna say is something has been found out. There's something about this partner that you have, that you're with, um, that's been deceptive. If, if you're with somebody right now, it feels like there is a, there is something that has been deceptive in your relationship with someone, whether this is a business partner, a boss, or like a, a friend even, or a romantic partner. But with the Seven of Swords in reverse here, I feel like you understand what's happening. I feel like in some way you're seeing past the illusion, even if you can't really prove it on the surface. That's why the High Priestess is coming through here, because intuitively I feel like you know what's up. You know what's up with this guy, with this King of Pentacles energy, with this toxic devil energy. And it kind of feels like here for you guys that you kind of come to the point where you realize the the codependency or the toxicity here. And it has to do with this person, whomever is in this King of Pentacles energy. So this is like the breadwinner. It could be an earth sign, a Taurus specifically, or um, we do have Capricorn. We also have Capricorn here with the, the devil. Um, it could be a Virgo also, um, but it doesn't have to be an earth sign. It's just... It could be someone that's very materialistic minded, materially, materially minded. That's, I did just hear that. Um, it could be the breadwinner. It could be someone that's making most of the money. It could be someone that may be providing you with some form of finances or financial stability. And yet there's something, there's something, there's something wrong. There's something going on underneath the surface. And with the seven of swords here in reverse, I feel like you figured it out somehow. Again, it doesn't mean that you can prove it in the in the physical it doesn't mean that you've actually caught this person red-handed but something about this you see clearly now you have to trust your intuition here this is and and if this is a partner that you're with and you're just getting these like random flashes of inspiration or like energy or um uh insight or something or just just all of a sudden you're very clear on something trust your intuition there okay because that's telling you that's telling you the truth especially with this ten of swords at the bottom of the deck you have the ten of swords now to the nine of pentacles okay uh first of all this insight that you're getting from your intuition is helping you is helping set yourself free that's what i just heard it's helping you bring this situation to an end to a rest. I do feel like there are money and fight there is money and finances involved with this because underneath the Ten of Swords you do have the Nine of Pentacles. And to me, the Nine of Pentacles is talking about you being self-sufficient and being able to stand on your own. So this could be a situation or in which whomever this King of Pentacles is, they're providing you with some sense of financial stability. And the toxic or codependent aspect of it is that this person could be trying to manipulate you to stay in an energy of code, being codependent on them. And yet with the Seven of Swords in reverse, I feel like you're seeing through it. And what's helping you end this type of situation, Ten of Swords, is you're coming to into the understanding of your own sense of sovereignty and your own sense of financial abundance, financial independence, or being able to stand on your own. Okay, um, I definitely feel like there is an energy or a level of your own sense of being the master of your own domain, the master of your own world and your own reality outside of the influence of this individual, this king of pentacles. I feel like that's what's coming online here for you. You're starting to realize that you can take control of your life and not have to worry about being connected or with to someone or with in a situation in which someone else is providing to you, which then also if someone and, and this is this is kind of something that I've always felt growing up. Um, I got to a point where I didn't I didn't feel comfortable 
taking money from like my parents or like, you know, getting large sums of money or getting investors in something or anything like that because I didn't want them sticking their hands in my business. I didn't want them saying, well, I'm, I'm paying for this. I'm footing the bill for this. So you're going to have to do what I say. That's what I'm feeling is coming through here. But I also feel like for you guys, this King of Pentacles is enjoying this. This King of Pentacles wants this type of energy because he has, he or she has some sort of controlling dominating like control issues like they are way more controlling than they allow themselves to be they're no they are they are way more controlling than they allow themselves to seem and that's part of this seven of swords energy that is now in reverse you see this for what it truly is at this point and that's influencing you to end this situation to get into a position where you are financially abundant you are financially self-sufficient it's putting you in the emperor energy, which is the master of your own, being the master of your own domain, being in control of your reality, which is then putting you in the driver's seat, the chariot, because now you have the understanding, the ace of swords. Now is the time for you to take this understanding. This, this ace of swords is reminding me of the seven of swords in reverse. You see clearly, you see the truth. Trust your intuition here, okay? It's time for you to take this understanding, this wisdom, and this knowledge that you have, rise above with it, and change your future. Wheel of Fortune to the Ace of Cups. Love yourself enough to put down these burdens and seek true happiness. Maybe even uh, uh, Reciprocity, Six of Pentacles. Nine of Cups, Six of Pentacles, okay? Okay, I want to move forward here. I do want to start clarifying, but I'm not going to do that yet because what I want to do first is I want to... I want to see what's next for this situation, okay? All right, so what's next for the collective in terms of this situation, please, Spirit? What's next here? Excellent. Excellent. You know what's interesting about all this? You know what's really interesting about this, you guys? I feel like even though this was a toxic and negative situation for you, it it feels like it was the kick in the pants that you needed to get your gears in motion, to stop relying necessarily on someone else to provide things for you and to start really working on getting it for yourself. I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody. I'm not trying to be judgmental on anybody, like whatever. Uh, this is just, this has, this seems to be Whatever this situation is for you, it seems to have been a lesson in sovereignty, a lesson in independence. It's like, you know, you want to be free and independent, but you are putting yourself in a position to require the assistance of someone else. And that's what leaves you susceptible to this toxic type of energy and to this deception here. All right. There was a higher purpose for this situation here. For sure. And it definitely feels like this higher purpose for this situation has been leading you towards a sense of inner balance, inner harmony, and inner union. So now what's next for the situation? You do have the Four of Wands to the Ten of Pentacles. And this literally feels like someone moving out of the house. Straight up and down. Someone is ready. And, and that, that could just be, that could just be uh, figurative. Or it also could be literal. This is a big old general reading, so take it as it resonates. But it feels like this literally feels like somebody getting ready to move out of the house. So you are solid, stable, and secure within yourself. You know what it is you need to do to sustain your life. You know what it is that you want to do to move forward in your life. And thus, because of that, this lesson is complete. The Ten of Pentacles, this situation, this cycle, this circumstance is over. Ten of Pentacles, you're ready to move forward, and I feel like you are inspired towards moving forward. The Ace of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Ace of Wands is the Hermit, to the Lovers, to Death, to the Two of Wands. There you go. So what is this talking about? Two of Wands obviously is a choice of how to move forward. Death is the transformation that you are going through or you have gone through, through this situation in the terms of the balance, the harmony, and the union of the masculine and feminine energies within you or just union with yourself. Okay, uh, the lovers, the hermit 
is representing the light of truth and honesty uh, that you have found within. Understanding who it is you truly are within, understanding your power, understanding what it is you are capable of. All of this is influencing you to move in a new direction. I want to get one more card here. Just one more card to round this out, please, Spirit. Just one more card to round this out. Okay, we're back to the Ten of Swords. This is good. But this is an end of a long and tough situation. Okay, you have so many tens that's come out here. You had the Ten of Wands show itself. You have the Ten of Pentacles here. You have the Ten of Swords coming out twice, showing itself twice as an overall energy. And you had the Wheel of Fortune show itself. These are all tens. This is a completion. Okay, and this completion is coming through for you because you finally see through the illusion. Okay. Final card you have here is the King of Cups. It has come out in reverse, but it fell on the floor and I can't... The... Okay, Spirit is saying the King of Cups is up right here. All right. Um, and actually, this is really, this is actually kind of perfect because what this is saying to me here is you are in the, you are in the emotionally stable place to do what is right for you, not necessarily to do what is easy. Of course, it would be easy. It should, I mean, would it actually though? I mean, I was going to say it would be easy to stay locked up here. Literally is what I just heard. Locked up. This is a sense of confinement. This, in, this individual, this king of pentacles is in control of you because of finances is what I'm hearing. So technically, in some cases, if you were to just stay the same, the same person that you were in the past, yeah, it would be easy to stay here. And in some cases, it may still be easy to stay connected to this situation, but I don't think it's really that easy any longer because of how you have changed as an individual. So it's not necessarily, I mean, technically, taking the emotion, the emotional aspects out of it, technically it would be easier to stay in the same place, right? You don't have to change, you don't have to work, you don't have to grow, you don't have to do something different. But with this King of Cups energy, I feel like you are finally, or you are, I don't want to say it that way, you have gotten to a place where you are emotionally ready to handle what's coming next in terms of you ending this situation, in terms of you standing on your own, in terms of you taking your power on and dropping the burdens, okay? The King of Cups is an emotionally uh, stable and grounded individual and also very emotionally available. But what the King of Cups is representing in, for you in this situation is being in a position to do what you know is right, even though it's not easy. Now, for some of you, it feels like it's much easier for you to take the reins and take the bull by the horns and take your power back and be like, F it, I'm out of here. Because it's become such a struggle. It's so confining in this energy. It's just like, ugh, I feel like my soul is being stifled, is being suffocated. It would be, it's, it's much better for you to have the freedom and the risk that comes with standing on your own and not having this sort of support system. But again, it feels like this support system is stifling you, okay? This definitely feels like a situation where someone is leaving the nest. And it may even be a situation in which, you know, you ended up having to move back home because of the pandemic or just like life circumstances and like your father or I just heard your brother or something, maybe even your mother, but like somebody was in control of your finances, someone was in control of your, your physical reality, your day-to-day -day life, and now you're, you're ready to break free. You're ready to step out either again or for the first time, okay? Again, this feels like an energy of, uh, even if this is figurative, it feels like an energy of somebody leaving the nest, okay? All right. Let's move forward and let's get some clarity. Um, first thing I want to clarify is definitely the, the Seven of Swords in reverse. Well, shit. I mean, I'm just trying to shuffle the deck and the world came popping out as I was talking about that. So this is really, 
the Seven of Swords in reverse is absolutely speaking to a level, a sense of deception that is no longer in play here. You see through it now. You actually, you understand, even if the other person or the people that we're talking about here that you're connected to, even if they weren't actually being deceptive, there is an element to this situation that has been deceptive for you. And that could have just been um, your beliefs about who you are and where it is you're going in life and especially what it is you are capable of. The seven of swords and the seven of swords could have been that been you deceiving yourself in thinking that you couldn't stand on your own, and that's what was causing you to stay chained to some sort of financially abundant individual to help you succeed or help you live. It, regardless of whatever this is for you, the finally the illusion has broken, and you can see clearly, and your you your intuition is giving you a strong understanding of what's really going on here. Yeah. All right, so let's clarify. Seven of Swords, please. I'm gonna give this, well, yeah, I'm gonna give this five shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. Four. So let's talk about this Seven of Swords a little bit more, yeah? Clarify this Seven of Swords in reverse. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Yep. I'm gonna leave it there. All right, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Eight of Wands. Okay, so this feels like the air is open and clear. It's, this kind of feels like a little bit of a jailbreak energy. Okay, but the first card that came out here for you is the Four of Pentacles. So the main thing about this deception or the, getting away with something was holding on to the past or holding on to something for fear of losing out but then ending up losing even more in the process because you didn't want to let go and trust yourself, trust your intuition, trust the universe, whatever. You have that with death, the nine of swords, the sun, the page of wands, and the ten of cups. Okay, there's that last ten. I feel like <clears throat> the, so the four of pentacles and the nine of swords was, is connected here. This is that old energy. This is the fears of the what ifs, the doomsday, the worst case scenarios and all that stuff. And holding yourself in a position out of fear. Okay, holding yourself in a position out of fear. But it seems that you have transformed through that death. Okay, you have the sun, which is victory and the most optimistic card in the deck here. But the sun also, also is representing illumination. I feel like there's some sort of there's something that you've discovered about yourself, about yourself within the deep depths of your soul, is what I want to say, that is now emerging, that's now coming through. Remember, you have the hermit come out at the bottom of the deck a few moments ago, okay? So there, it feels like with the sun here, there is, there is a strength within you, a power within you that you are tapped into that is now emerging from the depths of yourself. And that's causing you to re-identify yourself. That's causing you to change the way you approach the, to the situation. Page of Wands is also influencing you to start a new chapter that's going to lead you towards the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups being your ultimate wish fulfillment. Um, uh, I'm sorry, ultimate emotional fulfillment. Um, but also, I'm actually getting strong family vibes with the Ten of Cups. I feel like whatever direction you're moving in could really potentially help you with um, some tension within the family if this is a family situation. It's like you getting out of this situation, moving forward on your own somehow is going to help relieve a lot of the tension. And then what once used to be a really tight family unit that seems to be breaking apart can find a way to come back together as individuals in a much more beneficial light, okay? I really like that for you. All right, um, let's clarify a little bit more here. I wanna talk about the King of Pentacles. 
What's the King of Pentacles here, please, Spirit? What's the King of Pentacles? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you have the Eight of Cups here. So walking away from this, underneath that, you I, I'm sorry, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Queen of Cups as an overall energy here. So it feels like this has to do with emotional boundaries. Uh, for some, for some of you here, it feels like this King of Pentacles tried to have his hands, his or her hands in everything. And it seems like you've come to the point where you fully understand how it is you feel about this, or your intuition is very, very strong at this time. And there's a need to put boundaries in place. And thus, this is why you are walking away from the situation, walking away from the established energy. You have the king and the queen of cups here. So in terms of the situation, it feels like um, you've come to an understanding about how it is you truly feel in the, in the situation and what boundaries you actually need to put in place. And then the king of cups is representing the action of doing that. Even though it's not the easiest thing to do. You know it's the right thing to do, so you're going to move forward with it, but it's not the easiest thing to do because this person is very controlling. I swear. I just feel like this very, this person is very, very controlling. And I'm hearing financially abundant. And so that kind of gives him or her the right to do so, which is bullshit anyway. But <laughs> in, in, in today's world, in common society, money equals power, money equals respect. And so that, you know, that's how they get away with it. It's very ego-based, okay? But I think you're seeing through that. Last thing I want to clarify here is the devil, all right? What's the devil here, please, Spirit? I do feel like this is a parent or guardian type situation. It doesn't absolutely have to be. Um... Yeah, uh, uh, that's the main thing that I'm getting from this. But of course, you guys, this is a this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. But what's coming out to clarify the devil is the six of cups with the five of wands. And the first thing that I thought of with the six of cups was uh, a connection from the past. Um, so maybe this is a grandparent or a godparent or a legal guardian or just somebody from the past that has some sort of ties to you that they are using to manipulate the situation. It's like because of who they are to you, or at least who they have been to you in the past, again, this could be apparent, um, but it, it's like they're using this past energy to keep their hooks in you. And there's a differing of opinion here, the five of wands, but it's literally just opinion, okay? You have the Eight of Wands, again, at the bottom of the deck. I, I, there's just a sense of freedom here. And if this is not somebody that's, like, legally connected to you or is, like, a family member, I, regardless of whatever this is, I get this, this, this feeling or this vibe from this, from this Six of Cups, Five of Wands. It's like, well, look at what all that I've done for you in the past. You can't walk away from me now. You owe me too much. I've done too much for, for you to just to just let you walk away like that. That's some toxic ass bullshit. Because if this person if this person really was as caring and supportive of you as they say or as they make it out to be, they would be happy for you. They would be encouraging you to stand on your own, to gain your independence, to take your life in your own hands and do for yourself. They would be happy to see you striving for that. Instead, they want to keep you under control. They want to keep you under your under their thumb. They want to, they are, I don't necessarily, I don't know, I don't know if they're happy with it or whatnot, but they are willing to keep funding funding you or funneling you some sort of financial abundance towards you or maybe even some sort of physical stability 
for the payoff that they get in being able to control you. But here now, you have a clear opportunity to open the floodgates, to clear your way, to clear the energy, and get into alignment with what it is you truly want, and then follow through with that. There could be a mourning process here, Five of Cups, in terms of like, we could end, this could end up in a tower moment, um, and you're going to have some, some grieving to do. There's going to be a little bit of loss here, but whatever is you're losing is clearing space for you to gain much more, even better. Okay, so in terms of that, don't give up nine of wands because there's a greater sense of balance that's coming into your life. Control even of your own life. Stay strong. Strength. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave it there. And I want to close out this reading with some oracle guidance here. I want to get it from the Lightworker Oracle today. Yeah? Okie dokie. So, closing oracle guidance for the collective in terms of this reading. Yeah, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. All right, guys, closing Oracle guidance for this collective reading, please, Spirit. Okay, perfect. We have card number one, first ray of power. The first ray of power is energy of conscious destruction. It can be used in a healthy way to eliminate the past and allow for a fresh start. The first ray also carries the frequency of leadership, the emperor energy, yeah? It can assist you to stand in the truth of your light so others can find their way by it. It helps to strengthen your willpower so you can accomplish any task you choose. The Ascended Master El Moira uh, El Moria, excuse me, El Moria, brings hi you his particular blessing and encourages you to believe in your own strength and take the initiative on what matters most to you. Um, let's see. Let's, I want to read this paragraph. If you are confused about which path to take or whether to continue a certain relationship, course of action, or lifestyle choice, the first ray of power will clarify matters for you. When it moves through our lives, whatever is holding us back will be removed, either through circumstances seemingly beyond our control or by our own actions based on a sudden inner knowing. There's that tower energy that I was feeling. So this situation could, could end up being a tower moment for you. Whether and I, but I feel like for the most part, it's going to be of your own volition, if that's the right word for it. That's the word that was coming to mind. It's of your own efforts. Okay, you are effectively creating this tower moment, but to free yourself from some sort of trickery, tomfoolery, some sort of controlling aspect. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>